Hey everyone, so I recently bought a new lens, the Sigma 150 to 600 millimeter, a lens that is often used by wildlife photographers. And in this video, I'm just going to share some of my first impressions of this massive lens. It's a beast, it weighs a ton. This is not a full on lens review, just some first impressions and personal experience from a photographer who is not a professional wildlife photographer you know, living in a city and all. So let's start with why. Why did I buy this lens? Well, I was going on a trip. As you can see, my surroundings have changed. I'm in rural Idaho right now, right near Grand Teton National Park, and I really wanted to photograph some wildlife while I was out here. I couldn't justify buying a $13,000 zoom lens like the one that Canon makes, so I was looking for something a little bit more affordable. The Sigma 150 to 600 millimeter lens costs around $900, which for a lens like this is actually a pretty good deal. For a long time, I was debating between getting a Canon two times teleconverter, which costs about $430, getting this Sigma zoom lens or simply renting a lens. However, renting a lens for as long as I would have needed it for was just not worth it. And I did the math and it would have probably been better to just buy one. And I went with this lens instead of the teleconverter because the teleconverter is already half the price of the lens. So might as well get a lens. Anyway, so I tested this lens out already before my trip and I took some pretty cool photos of wildlife in a park with it one day. So I was already impressed beforehand, but the place where I've really been using this lens is out here in Grand Teton National Park, where I have spent a lot of time driving around looking for wildlife. And I found wildlife and I did get the chance to use this lens and I'm very happy that I did. So on my first day in the Tetons, I went to that iconic spot on Mormon Row and came across a huge herd of bison. It was the perfect place to test out my new lens since getting close to bison is dangerous and having a good amount of zoom is ideal so you can really keep your distance uh, and you know not get like charged by a bison and still get pretty cool shots. So because of where the bison were there were a lot of like fences and places where I could hide and photograph them from a safe distance while also feeling like you're like in the middle of the wilderness. I don't know, it was pretty cool. So while I was photographing the bison, I had full sunlight, which is great because this lens doesn't do so well in low light. So my shots were pretty crisp and clear at ISO 100. Out here, I was taking photos handheld with no tripod. In retrospect, I probably could have brought my tripod, but um, I just felt like I was a little bit more mobile without it. And uh, so I did all of these photos handheld. The lens is heavy. I would often lean the lens on something like on a fence or kind of sit down and lean it on my knee because this is honestly the heaviest lens I have ever owned. But you know what? For photos, handheld shots were perfect. I had no problem getting crispy, clear handheld photos. However, when I wanted to record video, that's where I had some problems because my video footage straight out of the camera is shaky when I'm using this lens handheld. When I was filming video, I definitely had to lean it on something, try to stabilize it a little bit. And then in post-processing, I had to apply, you know, warp stabilizer just to smooth it out a little bit. So handheld video footage is going to be a lot harder with this lens. All right, so here's some more photos I did with the lens. Animal number two, the moose. I took these photos in the early, early morning hours, right before sunrise it was still pretty dark out. And as I said before, this lens is not great with low light. At 150 millimeters, the maximum aperture is f5, and at 600 millimeter, the maximum aperture is 6.3. So when I was using this lens and zooming in on that moose, I had to actually push my ISO to 3200 to get these shots. Now that's not bad because my camera can handle higher ISOs. At one point, I pulled out my Canon 70 to 200 millimeter f 2.8 lens and took some photos with that as well. And there I got photos at ISO 800. So you can really see the difference in, you know, low light capability between these two lenses when you're photographing animals like early in the morning when it's still dark out. So you can never photograph too many moose. So here's moose number two. 
taken in the late afternoon. The moose was far, far away in a river. A lot of people were out there photographing it. And this time, because of you know where I was standing and I had solid ground, I took my tripod with me. Now, using my tripod with this lens made a huge difference, especially when it came to video. I got really solid, smooth shots. The ISO, of course, was still high because this was, again, the late afternoon. There was not a lot of sunlight. So the ISO was typically between 1600 and 2000. For these photos, I was zooming in to 600 millimeters. You know, a lot of the photographers around me, they would get like a tiny speck of a moose in the distance and I could really zoom in and get the details of that moose. Photo number four, the owl. Who here loves owls? I took this photo right as it was getting dark. If you guys have been out here, you know that the animals are most active at dawn and dusk, and that is indeed when I spotted most of the animals, which is great and all, but again, it really pushes your lens's capabilities. So it was almost dark. I spotted this owl in a tree in the distance. I zoomed in all the way to 600 millimeters and took a couple of handheld photos of this owl. But because the owl was still really far away, and it was still kind of small in the picture. I cropped the picture and this is the result. Now the ISO here is about 1600 as well. It's not the crispiest photo, but considering the circumstances, considering how dark it was and how far away that owl was, I think it's passable. Now, aside from the bison photos, the photos that I showed you have all been taken in very, you know, terrible lighting conditions, right? But they're all passable. But if you are blessed, to photograph subjects in broad daylight with the sun shining on them, it's really easy to get good shots. Photographing birds and small animals and other things in the middle of the day is easy. The photos are crispy and this lens definitely blows me away when I can see, you know, what kind of close-ups I can get. Again, I just want to re-emphasize this is not a professional lens review, just my thoughts and first impressions. But here are my key takeaways from the time that I've had this lens already. Number one, the weight can be an issue, especially if you're trying to travel light, which I'm not very good at. Well, I mean, sort of. Like, I never bring clothes, but I always bring gear. At 4.25 pounds, this lens makes my 70 to 200 feel light in comparison. So I do a lot of handheld photos with this lens, but it is definitely easier when you have a tripod or monopod. I have done hiking with it, but to be honest, after lugging it around for a while, my back does start to hurt, especially since my camera bag has a bunch of other things in it, water bottles, other lenses, all of that. Two, you can get amazing quality photos when the lighting is good. I mean, seriously amazing. In low light, however, you will have to bump the ISO. Since, as I said before, the maximum aperture at 150 millimeters is f5, and at 600 millimeters, the maximum aperture is 6.3. If your camera can handle higher ISOs, this shouldn't be a problem. I would probably only want to use this lens on a camera that can handle those higher ISOs, or just use it in conditions where you have really good lighting. So I'll talk more about my experience with this lens in a future video. This lens is not new. It's been around for ages, I think probably like a decade, but it's new for me. And that is because professionally I have never needed this kind of telephoto lens. Because as I said, I'm not a professional wildlife photographer. However, it's a lot of fun and it's definitely been a fun lens to use. Definitely worth the back pain of carrying it around. Now I just gotta work on building up my arm muscles. All right guys, I hope you enjoyed learning about my experience with this lens. If you have this one, let me know what you think of it or if you have a different lens that you use for wildlife photography, comment below and let me know what you use. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to my channel if you are new here and I will see you in the next video. Take care. There's a grizzly, I think it's a grizzly bear yeah. up there. Um, he's at a pretty okay distance, I think. I mean, we, there's only one way back to the car. Yeah.